Nation Nation, we are working hard. I know you're working hard. We're all working from home. We're all working. And we are down under my afternoon. Michael Jenkins, it's your morning, sir, over in Adelaide, Australia. Good morning to you. Good morning out there. How are you all? Good. Good. So uh, you reached out to us and said you you detected something very interesting with uh, in a in a very interesting world. We don't have to have that conversation again this month. But you said you're seeing a resurgence of ransomware. Uh, and it, 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 take it from the top. What's what's going on? Yeah. Well, let, let me just run a scenario past you. Let's think back to the urgency we've all had to work from home. And let's put yourself in the place of that business owner who has 13, maybe 20 staff. And to keep my business going, I need to send people home. So yeah. you go out and you buy your webcams and your laptops and whatever you need to do and ask them maybe to use their home machines as well to log in from home. Now, the problem is I still need to make money. I need to do it quickly. So I call on you, the MSB, my trusted IT guy, and I put some pressure on you. And I tell you, hey, my budget's this big. My timeline is even smaller and I need you to get all my guys working from home ASAP. Now that might mean faster internet's coming along. It might mean a new server for remoting into. It might mean setting up VPNs and RD gateways, whatever technology it might be. But the problem is you are under the pump. You've got this customer on the phone at the moment, the next one rings in and the next one rings in and you've got all these customers and they want to work from home yesterday. Yeah. So you get your guys out and you ramp it out and you get them all working from home, you might set up remote desktop or whatever you might set up, even to, I don't know, various other third party offerings, and you get everybody working from home and that customer is happy. Then they get hit with ransomware. Now, how did this ransomware get in? Well, possibly it's because everybody has ramped up this working from home, nobody's planned it, nobody's yeah. been thinking about it, and Brain. security, <laughs> antivirus, backups, whatever, is now yeah. in the back of the mind. Yeah. We've just ramped it up so quick. And we've had a lot of examples of that in Australia. And looking worldwide, we're seeing a lot of other very close examples where people have thought, oh, I'll get to security tomorrow. They really need to get their business going. They've got to make money. They've got to keep these guys employed and be able to pay for their homes and whatever they've got to pay for. And they ramped up way too quick. Now, yeah. we've had a lot of people where, um, They've done some silly things, some silly things that as a normal MSP on your normal day, when you're thinking about it, you wouldn't have done. Maybe you've turned on a remote desktop. I don't know what you've done, but you've done something. And unfortunately, these hackers have figured out these people are panicking. They're stumbling over their own feet. Perfect time to crack those passwords and get in through remote desktop. In Australia, yeah. we've seen massive escalation of remote desktop being hacked and mm. on big organizations. Now, one in particular, um, which is not a, not a good story, 21 years in the business. And what this company does is manage finances for people who can't manage them themselves. So okay. it helps them pay their bills, buy food, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I should hire them. They got, <laughs> yeah, go they got hit with ransomware. Now, not yeah. such a biggie, except this company has been around for 21 years has got all the bank details for all their customers. Yeah. Now, they were worried originally about notifiable data breach and that they would have to tell the world, hey, by the way, all this information got caught by a hacker or whatever, but they got encrypted. The problem came about when they suddenly couldn't use those account details to pay those yeah. bills. So all these unfortunate people that can't normally make themselves stay to a schedule and pay bills aren't getting the bills paid anyway. Then it turns out this ransomware that got on this machine, which was asking for a huge amount of money, also had enough time to figure out what their backup was and encrypted the backup. Yeah. Also figured out what cloud technology they were using and what agent they were using in the cloud and dumped all their old backups and made sure that the most recent backup contained encrypted information. Not only did they do that, but it sounds like they copied one of the good backups off onto another server and can now hold them to ransom for their own data. So we have a yeah. customer who cannot go back, actually it's not one of our customers, thank goodness, but we have a person who cannot go back to their backup, cannot go back to their server, can't go back to the cloud, has no option but to pay out this ransom. Meanwhile, they've got thousands of customers 
you can't eat, you can't pay their mortgage, you can't do anything. Well, I have, and I have and a question, can... if, if you mm -hmm. don't mind. I, I'm very interested in yeah. this um, because uh, I, I, I was being a little facetious, but, you know, I so, sometimes I'm off doing the entrepreneur and big picture thing, and I myself have to discipline myself to pay my bills, right? I mean, I just, I do. Mm. Okay, it's the fifth of the month, I got to pay my bill. It's, it, it, and... What's the persona of the end customer in this scenario? So might it be an elderly person with a, a, a little dementia and this firm is, is acting in a fiduciary responsibility to pay the bills for the uh, elderly uh, dementia patient? Could it be wackadoo Harry that forgets to pay his bills on time and I will, I will hire you to pay my bill? Is it, or is it everybody? Interesting. Um, there was an article I read about this particular business. Being 21 years old, they've got quite yeah. a large number of customers. Yeah. Um, and it's everybody. And their main target originally was, hmm, you can't save money, therefore you can't buy that fancy toy that you want. What if we help you save money, pay your bills, and show you you can afford that fancy toy? It might be a fancy car or a boat or something like that. And originally it was to help people to show them that yes, you do make enough money if you use it wisely to be able to invest in those things you really, really want. Okay. Then it came into more of, hmm, there's some people who don't actually earn a lot of money and they need to have somebody on their behalf call maybe an energy provider or water provider and argue the bill down or get terms and things like that. And then along came elderly and dementia and things like that. So okay. they cover a whole range of services from those that just want to save a little extra to those that this is their lifeblood and without this money, they're not going to survive. Well, the and reason I, really yep. yeah, and, 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 and the follow-up question is if we go back to the elderly and the uh, infirmed and so on. So in the U.S., and I, I believe you have similar privacy laws. You're familiar with our medical um, laws, HIPAA, and there's privacy yep. issues. And if you violate that, um, you know, so you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're crossing the line to taking care of someone almost in a healthcare facility and, mm -hmm. And, and, the, and then this incident occurs, then you're in trouble with the civil authorities, right? And and I don't know if that also happens in Australia. <laughs> yeah, we have a similar thing. It's called notifiable data breach. Um, I'm not sure how it plays out the same, but in our situation, um, if you have had a breach and you know you've had a breach, you need to report it to the authority. The authority will then make sure that you've done everything in your power to make sure you claw that data back. If you can't, you make sure everything in your power to block any further breaches and you invite forensics experts in to make sure they've covered everything off so that there's no other way it can happen again. Um, yeah. And if you don't do that, there's millions of dollars of fines and you won't be operating again. Um, okay. And that is a very true case in this case because as a ransomware um, of hacker, they've obtained a complete copy of this server with all those records. Um, so there is, in this case, a possible notifiable data breach. And of course, even if you do pay the ransom, do they actually give you the only existing copy of that data back? Or do they keep a copy for later on when they can maybe, when the dust is settled, go out and use your data and sell it again? Who knows? Yeah. Hackers are not notoriously uh, well respected. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do what they say they get to do. Um, yeah. But in this case, um, some of the fallout um, is people very publicly we're talking mainstream media, have come out to say that once this is settled, they won't be storing their money with this company ever again. Yeah, yeah. And for 21 years in the business of doing a lot of good for one small little mistake, that's not a good thing at all. And goodwill, especially with other people out there, is not something you can insure. It's not something you can claim back really easily. Oh, you, you can have to lose it with it a back. click. Yeah, you can Absolutely. literally lose it with a click. And yeah. Hey, follow on the question. Hmm. Um, back back to your core story. Uh, so, the follow on is uh, over the weekend. I, I, it's interesting you were talking about back of back of mind and and all that because literally over the weekend I was doing a little reading, and um, all of us. I, I raised my hand, but all of us don't have the highest mental acuity being cooped up at home. For weeks on end, it does affect you. I mean, there's an article about it, right? We are affected, okay, and it's okay. <laughs> it's it's not a weakness. It's just we kind of are, and I see it in myself, Michael. I have to 
work hard some mornings to concentrate right now. I mean, I really have to work hard to concentrate versus that's normally a natural act. And what I'm getting at is I think it plays into this surge in ransomware because if you don't have the highest level of mental acuity for, and, and again, you're not stupid, you, you, you're just stressed and all these things going on in your head, um, then it kind of calls into question, for lack of a better word, hygiene, right? Your data hygiene, not your, you know, physical. I still brush my teeth, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's where I would see an attack vector, right? Is is that the the hackers are taking advantage of this psychological condition to penetrate and get people to click the link or do something? Absolutely. I mean, when I'm at home, uh, and I tell my employees this as well. I don't expect them to be slogging eight hours a day. I expect them to put something into their personality, maybe be sport or something they're going to watch on TV or whatever during their work day, just to keep them sane. Now, have I just let them have a back door of something else getting in that I shouldn't have let in? You're very right, because at home, you put your feet up, you put your comfortable clothes on, and you do the same with your data. You get comfortable, yeah. you get relaxed. and you assume that this little antivirus you're running on your machine is, is going to meet your corporate standards. You assume that this machine that you've done yeah. other things on, um, where you may have downloaded, I don't know, some sort of malware accidentally, isn't going to get onto your systems at work. You assume that that password that you chose because you were relaxed yesterday is going to be secure enough tomorrow. Um, you also assume that this USB key that's been sitting on your desk for ages that you haven't plugged in is safe, and I'm just going to plug it in and away I go. You don't think about these things because you've got into a level of, okay, I'm scared of coronavirus. I'm at home. Deal with it. Yeah. And back yeah. of mind, security. One, one. <laughs> and, you know, I have no idea what's on it. I found it in storage. <laughs> Michael, there's, yeah. one, there's one way to find out what's on it. <laughs> this one here has a little sticky note on it, and I'm not going to show you what it says because it starts with the word virus. <laughs> I was looking into a virus sample for somebody trying to work out what it was doing. Now, if that sticky note falls off, I'm not going to remember what was on that stick. Um, but look, that's what's happening. And yeah. of course, people are, um, we, we're human and we hate changing passwords or right. even now with everything having second level factor authentication, um, people are still not really liking to do that. And we've now let, instead of us having one IT guy in charge of the IT for my business, We've now let every mother and father who has a friend who does IT look after people's computers at home and they're all remoting into my business. And as a business owner, I can tell you that I've got a certain antivirus I push out on all workstations, but do I control the ones at the homes? No. Do I control no. the fact that yeah. my person's gone home to use a machine which their son also uses for schoolwork or for torrenting yeah. and peer-to-peer -peer and playing games? Do I know yeah. that when that person goes home and they log onto that computer, are they using their own log on or are they using a family log on that's shared with everything else that goes on? We don't know these things. And just yeah. as we might say, we want you to have an economical chair, we want you to practice health and safety at home, we want you to make sure you don't have boiling cups of water near your computer when you're working, we can tell them all that kind of thing. And they, they may still hurt themselves. Um, but at the same time, we don't think about the level of hygiene of their home computers. Right. And not only that, where did they get that home computer from? Before this outbreak, did they have that computer or did they rush out in the last few hours and spend a couple of hundred dollars buying whatever they could on the shelf yeah, and exactly. put on their desk? They maybe exactly. don't have any virus. Yeah. And then there's the extra world of Dropbox and OneDrive and things like that where who knows what data is being merged with your file system or copied from your file system to remote yeah. computers. So there's so much going on. Yeah. And ransomware is just another way of highlighting that as MSPs, we always need to think about security. We always need to think about if we're using USB drives for backup, are they encrypted? Where do they go? If we're using the cloud for backup, has that cloud provider got a true proven record? Do they encrypt the data? Do they need a password for their agent to contact the cloud services to upload the data? Can someone else log in and delete the last 20 years of backups? Can someone upload an encrypted oh. backup to the cloud? 
But by analogy, uh, and then I have one final question for you, but by analogy, what you're kind of describing in my mind's eye is kind of what we're going through in the U.S. So we have the pandemic. It's highly distressing, uh, both, you know, uh, the, from, from a health point of view, an economic point of view, and so on. And then up here, you have uh, uh, legitimate concerns about some peaceful and lawful protests going on. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. And, and, and they have the right to do that. But my main point is, then you have what amount to hackers or bad actors taking advantage of all this chaos, right? And, and doing what they do, the anarchist and, 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 and so on, right? And, and it, th that's kind of what the hackers are doing. They're kind of like anarchists, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it's just the, they're taking advantage of all this chaos. Hey, final question. Um, I think I heard from Carl Palachak that, they have postponed the fall conference, and it's usually in Adelaide, right? The SMB IT. What what is the conference you do each year, uh, and was it postponed? And and I I, I support you. I it wouldn't surprise me if, if I heard correctly. Yeah, look, uh, we have SMB IT Pro, um, which is a, a group that meets every month in each of the states of of Australia, and then has a once a year national conference. Um, and this year it was actually held in Adelaide. Uh, next year it's actually at the Gold Coast. Um, and well, okay. sorry, we're in there. Uh, I'll yeah. go to that one. Um, I'll go to the Gold Coast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go on. um, but look, um, everything everything at the moment is up in the air. Um, we, we have okay. absolutely huge major events that are cancelled uh, six to eight months out from those events occurring. Yeah. Now, one of those big things to think about is not so much that should we cancel the event because of coronavirus? But do we have enough time to prepare? Because everyone's been in yeah. self-isolation. No one's thought about, okay, have we got buses organised? Have we got hotels organised? Have we got conference rooms organised? And as most of us know, organising something where there's three, 400 attendees takes many, many, yeah. many months of preparation. Then you've got things like printed material, organising projectors or whatever you're going to organise, uh, speakers, microphones, audio equipment, and at the moment, to be honest, a lot of those sort of studio type companies which provide that equipment are either still in hibernation or are not planning to reopen the other side of this event. So there's yeah. a lot of up in the air stuff. Um, yeah. I myself, I'm involved in a number of things. One of them is um, a thing called the uh, Bay to Burwood Run, which is a run of vintage vehicles from the 1900s. It's the biggest vintage organized vehicle run in the world. There's at least 1,800 attendees. Um, they told me that it takes somewhere between 18 months to yeah. two years to plan an event. Yeah. Things like toilets, food, everything. Oh, Cancel. yeah. We've yeah. got the Adelaide show here for my local city, Cancel, which has upset a lot of kids. Um, and at the moment, as far as I'm aware, there's been no new detections in Australia of coronavirus for the last few days. Um, yeah. We are yeah. technically virus free. And yet eight months from now, everything has been cancelled. Yeah. Um, not only that, but you would think that these sorts of events would invent, uh, sorry, invest a lot of money and stimulus back into the community. A lot of the support businesses are not open. Uh, absolutely. It's very distressing. Mm. Yeah. So yes, SMBIT at this present moment, um, I don't think the hammer has fallen yet to say it's definitely not okay. happening. Okay. Um, but um, there's a lot of things yet to be decided for a lot of different things. And uh, at the moment, it's looking very uncertain. Um, we don't have any travel between states at the moment. And even with three, 400 attendees, um, I would suggest more than probably three quarters to, to maybe even 90% of those attendees would come from interstate. Um, there's no one has actually said that we'll even have aeroplanes in the air by then. Um, I'm sure you see similar scenes there in America of yeah. airports just full of parked planes. They're going nowhere. Um, yeah. In fact, one of our biggest carriers, um, which is Virgin Airlines here in Australia, um, almost went bankrupt and almost mm. closed down completely. Um, it looks like they will come back, but the aeroplanes have been going nowhere um, and the police do not allow people over the states. So yeah. at, at worst case, maybe we'll be looking at a virtual event. Yeah. And we all know we like to be in person. Yeah. We all like to shake hands. Yeah, don't don't, don't get me started about virtual events. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, 
um, <laughs> the, there's a problem with virtual events too, because people get the impression they can visit them any time, and therefore they don't turn up at all. Um, yeah. People think, you know, it's it's, it's going to happen same. again. It's been pre-recorded. Yeah, yeah, it's not the same. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. definitely not the same. Well, um, in fact, there's nothing you know what? Yeah. Let's uh, actually let's talk about that next month. I'm going to make a note here Absolutely. in Microsoft OneNote, but I want to talk to you about that. You know, that's a longer conversation. Uh, we just did a virtual event last week um, in the technology space. I'll give you an update on that. But, sir, uh, keep it uh, keep it safe. Go wash your hands. Thank you. Thank you for joining us each month. I know we're taking time out of your precious day. That's all right. This is the uh, ultimate in Corona sort of hygiene here is that I'm, what, 14,000 kilometers from you or more? Um, yeah. I think we're safe. <laughs> yeah, you are safe. I should follow uh, our own advice up here. Okay, take care, my friend. Have a great day.